Hello, welcome to the channel Why Stories. Enjoy watching. Amaya didn't even notice how six months had passed since she started working at this restaurant. Such a job was beyond her wildest dreams, despite all the difficulties and obstacles. Sometimes she had to stay late and even do other people's tasks, although she was just a waitress. But Amaya didn't refuse because she was paid extra for it. For a girl from a poor family, such money was a blessing. She was respected by her colleagues for her honesty and fairness. Amaya didn't have the habit of gossiping about others or saying bad things. If she didn't like something, she said it straight to the person's face. A couple of times she even dared to express her opinion to the director of her boss Phil Mossip, who patiently responded. I understand why you complain, Amaya, and I will definitely take it into account. Of course, her colleagues were surprised at how she managed to do it, but they didn't dare to do the same. They were afraid of Phil Mossip, considering him almost a god. Amaya, on the other hand, was goal-oriented by nature, and if she had something in mind, she would definitely do it. At least she didn't take the easy way out. Her whole life was associated with obstacles, and Amaya got used to them. It was her honesty and selflessness that made her even stronger. Amaya generally assessed life soberly and realized that it would not be easy for her. And if she was lucky somewhere, she would have to fight next time. The instinct of self-preservation also prompted her where to put on the brakes and not to fall into specially laid traps. On this day, she was decorating the hall with her colleagues. It had to look grand and bright, at least that's what the restaurant owner ordered before leaving for important matters. Phil Mossip trusted his staff and had no doubt that they would cope with everything. He especially relied on Amaya as the most responsible employee and sometimes even set her as a model to follow to other staff members. And no one envied her, on the contrary, they tried to live up to her. Amaya knew how to maintain friendship, even if she had to make someone a remark. Despite being just a waitress, people listened to her. The girl had a unique ability to attract people, so the owner favored her, noting her merits. It can be said that Amaya got this job at the right time and grabbed onto the lifeline. Her colleagues began to discuss that the hall was being decorated for a wedding, and Amaya overheard that a well-known surgeon in their city, Antonio Esteban, had decided to get married. The girl was eager to know the details and talked to one of the waitresses. Hey, Ines, who's his bride? You wouldn't believe it, but I don't really know anything myself, she replied. The restaurant manager said that besides the surgeon and his acquaintances, the mayor himself and his entourage will be there. He's a close friend of Antonio Esteban. Really? Is that true? Amaya asked, surprised. Well, I'm just repeating what I've heard, Ines crossed herself. But I'll be honest, the mayor is quite a difficult person, this Alvaro Carrera, she said, scrunching up her face. I see, said Amaya, but I don't think he'll be a problem for us, at least not on this day for sure. She didn't ask anything more. It was already clear that they needed to prepare for a serious event, and if the mayor was going to be there, it was a double responsibility. As far as Amaya knew, there were several structures in the city that controlled all the business. It seemed that the surgeon was also among them, as he had some connections with the mayor. In general, it was nervous in the air. Everyone understood that there could be no mistakes, otherwise the restaurant owner would have to make excuses, and he didn't like to be blamed. Therefore, the restaurant staff bustled about, noticing every detail so as not to miss anything. Amaya was responsible for her area, and everything was in order for her. As she prepared the hall, Amaya involuntarily thought about the past. Their family was incomplete. Although Amaya was an only child, no one else besides her mother was involved in her upbringing. She never saw her father. Of course, she tried to ask her mother questions about him, but she constantly avoided the topic. Belen worked as a maid in a roadside hotel. Her schedule was so busy that she had no time to rest, and she didn't always have the opportunity to have heart-to-heart -heart talks with her daughter. So Amaya grew up in a complete information vacuum, or rather, her mother didn't share any secrets with her. 
hence her ignorance about her father, whom she really wanted to see. Amaya even thought that her mother was obliged to tell her where he had gone, but Belen always found reasons to avoid answering. Amaya also knew that her mother used to work as a midwife, but left that job after she was born. It was unclear what prompted Belen to give up that job. But she didn't want to talk about it, and if her daughter tried to find out something, she changed the subject again. It seemed like there was some secret in that too, but Amaya didn't understand what it was and why it weighed so heavily on her mother. Time didn't pass unnoticed for her when she was in school. Every day she had to endure emotional stress because her peers treated her with contempt. Amaya couldn't boast of having beautiful, fashionable clothes. Although it wasn't necessarily prestigious, everyone paid the most attention to new clothes. And if a student constantly wore the same clothes, they would be considered poor. This also happened to Amaya. But she found the courage not to react to their teasing. Yes, they were sometimes hurtful, but her patience and determination didn't allow her to feel down and give up. Of course, her mother tried to provide her daughter with all the necessary things, but she primarily looked for practical, quality, and affordable items. Most importantly, they had to be comfortable and last as long as possible. On the other hand, the family was desperately short of money. Her mother carefully disguised it by often borrowing money. Then she would pay it back, but soon borrow again. It was a vicious cycle with no hope for a bright future. Amaya understood all of this and didn't blame her mother for not having everything her peers had. To help in any way she could, she occasionally ran away from school and went to a motel. Here, Amaya helped her mother, hoping that they would earn more, but it was a misconception because Belen's monthly salary remained the same. She received just as much. The motel owner wasn't going to spend more money on staff. He didn't care who was of hand there. Just business, nothing personal. Meanwhile, at school, Amaya tried not to get involved in any conflicts, even if the pressure was too much. But one day she had to stand up for herself. It happened in the seventh grade, just before New Year's Eve. She was rehearsing the role of a fairy tale fairy with the head of the creative circle. By that time, almost everything was ready, but the school principal intervened and asked for another girl to be approved for the role instead of Omaya. It turned out to be the daughter from a wealthy family who openly expressed her contempt for Omaya. That's when she had to defend her right to participate in the theatrical production. Fortunately, the head of the circle stood up for her. She had to face off with the wealthy family. But in the end, Amaya kept the role and played it beautifully in the New Year's performance. Another incident happened when Amaya was in 8th grade. She was preparing a wall newspaper as assigned by her head teacher. The task was to create the layout and write a few notes, which she did excellently. However, the rich girl once again interfered. She wanted to be a writer too, despite constantly getting poor grades and being unable to express her thoughts eloquently. Amaya had to fight for her rights again. It was difficult, but she managed to get the girl to stop bothering her. After everything was done, the wall newspaper was displayed in the most visible place. Amaya included notes about school life, sports events, and various achievements. In response, she received praise and respect from all the teaching staff. However, she still maintained her status as a poor girl. It seemed like it was deliberately stuck on her. Her peers did not want to understand that she and her mother were barely making ends meet. They had a burning desire to gloat, and they tried their best to humiliate Amaya so that she would not even dream of condescension. It is hard to say why they pushed so hard. Most likely, their parents simply spoiled them. After all, they could not boast of good grades, while Amaya was highly respected by teachers. They put her as a model to follow, not suspecting that they were pushing the poor girl into a pit of malicious gossip. None of them had any idea what trials she had to go through. Only the head of the creative circle, Felicia Montego, supported Amaya as best she could. Once, the rehearsal of a play dragged on, so Amaya had to stay. In such cases, Amaya warned her mother not to worry, and after reciting her lines several times, Felicia Montego sat down on the wooden steps and called her over. 
I know you have problems with your classmates, Amaya, she began. Please, I don't want to talk about them, Amaya pleaded. I understand, but if we don't discuss this problem, it won't go away, Felicia continued. Believe me, Amaya, I was an outcast once too. Are you serious? The girl asked in surprise. Absolutely, the woman replied. I still tremble when I think about it. Do you think there were no rich kids when I was a kid? Probably not, Amaya answered uncertainly. Someone told that the country went through a crisis at that time. Everything is all right, Felicia said with a smile. But believe me, even in times of crisis there are people who remain wealthy. And if those people are also connected to government, the crisis doesn't affect them as severely. They had everything for a comfortable life. I've heard something similar from my mom, but I didn't think it was true, Amaya said thoughtfully. That's why you shouldn't pay attention to your bullies, Felicia summed up the conversation. They don't know what the future holds for them yet. I can tell you that those who laughed at me didn't end up well. I continued to go and got a higher education. It's true that I didn't pursue a career in theater because I decided to dedicate myself to children instead. Felicia Montego became a guiding star for Amaya, and she shared her secrets and experiences with her. Almost all of the plays were prepared by Felicia herself, who sewed costumes at home at night and brought them in the morning. And as soon as Amaya had a free minute, she ran to the auditorium to try on the costumes. Their classmates couldn't help but notice this friendship, but they couldn't gloat over it. Felicia quickly put them in their place, explaining them everything. She chose her words carefully. You're behaving like uncivilized thugs, Felicia Montego said, adding a note of disapproval. You don't even have the courage to admit that Amaya is excelling in all areas. I don't count her appearance. She dresses in clothes that are comfortable for her. Think about your behavior, because it's easy to soar high, but falling down is much more painful. Maybe her words reached their consciousness, but they still didn't give up the opportunity to make fun of Amaya. Moreover, they complained to their parents that some teachers scolded them for no reason. After that, Felicia Montego had a conversation with the school principal, but she left his office with a satisfied smile. He couldn't do anything to her. Apparently, there were people who stood up for her and put the principal in his place. Naturally, Amaya found out about this. And, to be honest, she was very surprised. She didn't expect Felicia Montego to stand up for her so fiercely. Who were they to each other? They weren't related, but she still decided to help. For a while, the peers calmed down a bit, but then everything started again. However, now Amaya, following Felicia's advice, didn't even notice them. She just went towards her goal and didn't intend to deviate from her path. She almost finished school. Amaya was not worried about her grades or how she would pass exams. She was confident that everything would work out for her and she had no doubts about it. However, her classmates behaved differently. They were running around like crazy, but it seemed no matter how hard they tried that they were not gaining any more knowledge. Even private tutors could not improve the situation because most of them had barely passed the exams. Amaya aced her exams, but did not attend the graduation party, not only because she did not have money, but also because she did not want to see her bullies there. They would still have to communicate and look at each other. Why should she put herself through that? Especially for her nervous system. No, Amaya decided not to tempt fate and declined the invitation to the celebration. She did not tell her mother anything about it and spent the whole evening in the park to avoid suspicion. There, she fed ducks in the pond and listened to music on headphones. This was the place where Amaya felt much better. The dense forest around her had a beneficial effect on her mental state. It calmed her down and allowed her to calmly reflect on her future. However, a month passed after finishing school and Amaya's mother became seriously ill. She began having problems with her internal organs, and constant pain made Belen almost climb the walls. During these moments, her daughter was always by her side and tried to calm her down. But everything was in vain. Without medication, it was difficult to do anything. Felicia helped. 
She gave money for the medicine. However, this help turned out to be the last because soon she had to leave school and move to another city. The school principal still managed to achieve his goal and got rid of the leader of the creative club. He found another person who showed more loyalty and now only the children of wealthy parents were involved in the performances. Poor people were not allowed there. They were just spectators who enjoyed the art from the depths of the hall. The medicine that Felicia Montego bought was enough for a month. Then Amaya's mother lay in the hospital as a dead weight, taking up a bed. Of course, doctors approached her, prescribed treatment, but it did not help much. Even the chief physician disavowed it, saying that they could not do anything. And a couple of weeks later, they discovered that Belen had kidney cancer. The prospect of coming back to normal life was at risk. Her mother was literally fading away before her eyes. Amaya came to her room, often crying, but could not help her. Her mother's words sounded like a death sentence. Amaya couldn't help but understand that this was how she was saying goodbye. But she couldn't convince herself that this was destined to happen. The girl tried to keep it together, but sometimes her nerves gained the upper hand of her. When she came home, she quietly cried into her pillow, and there was no one to comfort her because their family had turned away. Months passed, and Belen turned into a walking ghost. She could barely move on her own. Amaya worked as a cleaner at a store near their house. The pay was small, but it was enough for food. However, there was no question of helping her mother with medicine. They were too expensive, and Amaya was afraid to even say the prices out loud. Slowly fading away, Belen had stopped noticing her own daughter. Amaya would go to her room, but her mother would just sit on the bed and stare at one point. All attempts to talk to her led to nothing. Having accepted that the disease would soon win, Amaya began preparing for independent life. And first of all, she needed to keep her housing. Six months later, her mother passed away. Belen was buried in the city cemetery. The municipality and social services helped with the funeral costs, but their promises of support turned out to be empty words. After a month had passed since the funeral, they had completely forgotten about her. Nobody even thought to check how she was living. Amaya became an orphan, but no one rushed to help her. Going to a university made no sense, or rather, Amaya couldn't afford it. At that time, the question of where to work was crucial. Working as a cleaner at the store, she earned enough for food, but she also needed to pay for her apartment. Amaya went to job interviews, even though the offices were too far from home, and she had to walk. She just didn't have the money to pay for public transport every time. But it so happened that no one was in a hurry to hire her without experience and education. Employers wanted a ready-made specialist, and they had no desire to deal with someone who still needed to be taught. Amaya walked around different offices for a long time until she finally stumbled upon an elderly restaurant owner. Phil Mossip was looking for another waitress. You know, Amaya, I don't usually hire people without experience, but something tells me that you are exactly the kind of employee I need, the restaurant owner said thoughtfully. If you hire me, you won't regret it, Amaya replied cheerfully. I know how to keep things organized and help out in the kitchen. My mom used to work as a maid in a motel, and I would often run to her when I was in school to see how everything worked and even help out. Well, I think that's a good recommendation, the restaurant owner said, rubbing his hands together happily, and invited Amaya to work. He wasn't really changing his principles, he just had a great instinct for people. Phil Mossip was an expert at reading people, and when he talked to Amaya, he made certain conclusions. Firstly, she was honest with him, as if she was in confession. Secondly, she really needed the money, not just to earn it quickly and then go looking for adventures. And thirdly, she had an idea of how the service industry worked. Soon, the owner saw for himself that Amaya was indeed a responsible worker. She quickly adapted to her new job and also quickly made friends with her colleagues. All this indicated that the girl really wanted to earn money to live normally. Amaya told Phil about her current financial situation. But the restaurant owner was not the kind of person who could just give money away. He gave her the opportunity to get out of the pit instead. 
Over time, Amaya learned to feel the mood of the visitors. She easily managed to make them like her. As a result, they ordered much more food than they planned and, moreover, demanded her as their server when they visited again. She could make such an impression that the other waitresses secretly envied her. At the same time, they didn't even think about trying to interfere or seek revenge on Amaya. Some more time passed, and the girl started to have regular admirers. They would come to the restaurant just to see her. They could have just ordered coffee, but it had to be served by Amaya. Her politeness and quality of service left them in indescribable delight. The restaurant owners saw all this and would occasionally give Amaya a little bonus. It wasn't a lot of money, but it warmed her heart. She could afford to buy more groceries and no longer had to save on. Even meat started appearing more frequently in her dishes. At the same time, Amaya would sometimes mentally go back to the time when her mother was sick and needed help. If only she found this job earlier, maybe everything would have been different. Continuing to work, Amaya gained more experience. She became wiser and more insightful. Sometimes she helped management with reports. Amaya learned that too. Having delved into the specifics of the restaurant business, she enjoyed serving people and feeding them the most delicious dishes. One day, as Amaya was returning from work, she heard a squeak. She was walking through the park, which was the closest way to her home. There were many visitors that day, but they all left satisfied. Amaya had also received good tips, and she was going to buy herself a cake to sweeten her mood. Stopping, she listened and heard the squeak again. It sounded like a mouse or something similar. Burning with curiosity, the girl decided to look into the bushes and almost stumbled. A little puppy was sitting on the grass. He was so weak that he couldn't bark or growl properly. He looked like a pooch, but that didn't bother Amaya. She didn't categorize animals into those that deserved attention and those that could be ignored. No, everyone was equal to her. Oh my God, you're hungry. And so dirty. Amaya said, almost crying. She picked up the puppy and emerged from the bushes. A woman happened to be passing by, and she frowned at the sight of the dirty puppy. Apparently, it was unpleasant for her to see an animal in such a state. It followed that if she had come across him, she probably wouldn't have felt sorry for him. Amaya also looked at her. So much so that the woman's legs trembled, and she almost ran out of the park. Examining the puppy, Amaya happily added, Well, let's save you. Twenty minutes later, she and her find were already at home. Amaya carefully washed the puppy. She wasn't hungry because she had satisfied her hunger at the restaurant, but she needed to feed the puppy, especially since he was looking at her with hungry and pleading eyes after she washed him. Amaya took some milk from the fridge, warmed it up a bit, and poured it into a deep bowl only after that. The puppy drank the milk in one minute and looked at Amaya again. There was still sausage and bread in the fridge. Amaya decided to share and made a sandwich, which she served to her puppy. After filling his belly, the puppy yawned contentedly and lay down by his new owner's feet. She was wearing her house slippers. It seemed that the dog liked the smooth artificial fur. He laid his head on one slipper and his body and tail on the other. Amaya waited for him to fall asleep and only then moved the puppy to the armchair. That's how he settled in with her, becoming her beloved pet. She walked with him in the park and around the city. Unable to come up with anything special, she named him Urbis. His fur was white and really resembled a snow leopard. The pet didn't respond to his name at first, but eventually grew to like it. He enjoyed walking with his owner and every time they went out, Urbis eagerly chased after pigeons. No, he didn't harm them, he just played and watched them fly away in different directions. In such moments, Amaya felt truly happy. Urbis pleased his owner with just his presence, he responded to all of Amaya's affection. She loved stroking him on the head and his belly. The pet responded in kind and immediately began licking her face. After improving her relationship not only with her colleagues, but also with the owner of the restaurant, Amaya received permission to take home some of the leftovers. 
She honestly explained to Phil Moss Sip why she needed them, and when he learned about the dog she found, he joyfully exclaimed, You did the right thing not passing him by. I almost cried when I found him in the bushes, Amaya replied with a sad voice. Honestly, I also have a dog at home. His name is Tim, Phil Moss Sip said, slapping himself on the knee. I rescued him from under a car three years ago when he was crossing the road. So, I understand. You can take the kitchen leftovers, I can relate to your situation. Amaya noticed confusion on his face, as if he was upset, one could assume that Phil Moss Sip really wanted to talk about his wife's infertility. The subject was so relevant that he constantly thought about it. The restaurant owner, seeing a kind and sincere person in the girl, apparently wanted to share his pain with her, but Amaya interrupted him mid-sentence and changed the subject. He was not offended, but clearly flustered. Therefore, he answered the question about the change in the interior incoherently and uncertainly. Amaya understood this, but she didn't dare to back down. She wouldn't bring him back to the old topic and ask, what about the children? Why do you only have a dog? No, that couldn't be done. As they say, the opportunity has gone. She went over all this in her head as she left the restaurant. She hurried home to treat her pet to delicious delicacies. And even though they were just leftovers, sometimes guests left whole, almost untouched portions. Urbis was waiting for Amaya right at the door. He happily barked when she started to open the door. Wagging his tail, the puppy followed the hostess into the kitchen. There, Amaya served him a sizable portion of mashed potatoes with goulash. Such dishes were on the menu at the restaurant where the girl worked. Phil Mossip respected healthy food in general, and he practically approved all the dishes himself. Moreover, he even suggested to the chef what to add or leave out. No one argued with him because visitors to the restaurant were simply delighted with the menu dishes, and many of them specifically came to order home-cooked food. Meanwhile, Amaya didn't rush into having relationships with men. Her mother was still in her mind. Belen raised her daughter alone all her life. Perhaps that circumstance was the reason why Amaya didn't think about marriage yet. The fate of the restaurant owner was another factor that influenced her attitude toward life. Sometimes he was gloomy, and then they tried not to bother him, understanding that perhaps he had problems at home. Amaya was afraid that she might not be able to have a child someday. How would her husband react then? She just couldn't imagine it and constantly postponed the moment when she could decide to get to know someone and start a relationship. For now, everything suited her, especially being near her pet. Urbis didn't let her feel like a lonely person, on the contrary, it seemed to her that fate had already rewarded her enough. And what else could she have wished for? Amaya hadn't thought about that yet. She didn't have grand plans for her life. The main thing now was to return to a normal life after her mother's death, settle down, and then think about starting a family. All these thoughts and memories rushed by like an endless train of thoughts in her mind. Shaking her head, Amaya returned to reality and looked at the wedding-decorated hall. It seemed like she hadn't forgotten anything. She added fresh flowers, beautiful helium balloons, and even a poster with messages for the newlyweds. It seemed like she had taken care of everything. She could confidently welcome guests, especially the surgeon who was said to be Apollo in the flesh. Finally, the first guests began to arrive. Among them was the mayor of the city. However, he was not alone. He was surrounded by a retinue of subjects and an impressive security detail. He was clearly afraid of something. Even during the day, he never went out without security. He was definitely involved in some criminal activities, but it didn't concern Amaya. Therefore, as was appropriate, she glanced at the tables once again and greeted guests at the entrance with a bright, snow-white smile. Some walked past without reacting to the beautiful waitress, while others smiled back. Only the mayor walked in with a dissatisfied expression. It seemed like he had been forced to come here. On the other hand, Alvaro Carrera had never been to this restaurant, at least not when Amaya was working. Otherwise, she would have remembered it. Sitting down at the entrance table, the mayor placed a microphone in front of him and looked at the empty stage. 
the security detail positioned themselves at the back of the restaurant, keeping a circular view for themselves. They didn't claim to be important guests, but they still had to bring dishes from the menu. Amaya took note of this, but the mayor needed to be served first. At that moment, Ines approached her again. Be careful when you bring his dishes, she nodded towards the mayor. Yes, I know, you've already warned me, said Amaya. Don't worry, he doesn't seem to be a real monster. See for yourself, but I wouldn't risk even approaching him, Ines continued to whisper fearfully. It's just scary to serve someone who can throw a plate at you. Oh, come on, Ines, Amaya almost laughed. It's just a bitter resentment of those waitresses who can't serve guests properly. The conversation was about the case when the mayor threw a plate at the waitress. It happened at the Mirage restaurant. Alvaro Carrera was considered a regular visitor there. However, on that day, he was served by a new girl who didn't know that a large napkin was always brought to the mayor with his prepared dish. He used it to wipe his three-story chin because the sauce was dripping down. But none of the restaurant guests paid attention to it. The security guards were sitting nearby, and if anyone dared to laugh, they would have a private conversation with them right away. No, jokes with the mayor didn't work, he just didn't understand them. He liked to show off his self as if only he should be listened to in the city. Alvaro Carrera couldn't stand someone else's opinion and immediately got angry. And he also liked to drink a lot, pluck up the courage, and even allowed himself to harass women, all of which happened with the approval of the restaurant owners where he visited. The mayor didn't refuse anything, considering his personality exceptional, and that's why everything went smoothly for him, including blatant attacks on businessmen. They paid him tribute because they were afraid of retribution. Feeling brave, Amaya approached him and offered the menu. And then it turned out that the mayor had already thoroughly drunk somewhere, and he smelled of alcohol. That's why he quickly passed by her without even saying hello. Seeing a young girl in front of him, the mayor, without looking at the menu, said, Bring me something meaty, so I can become a little bit fat. Amaya wanted to ask him what exactly he wanted from the meat, but she didn't. She went to the kitchen and asked the chef to prepare a meat delicacy. Hearing about the appearance of fat, he laughed. What a nightmare. His stomach will soon fall out of his pants. What is he talking about? I understand your concern for his health, but the order must be done, Amaya answered with humor. Oh, what kind of care are we talking about? I just can't believe that people can let their bodies go like this. The chef waved his hand and went to the stove to prepare the meat dish. Amaya went back to the main room and stood by the bartender's counter. Looking at the mayor, she almost choked. He was sitting on a chair, his belly hanging almost to the floor. How could women love such a man? Especially his legitimate wife? It was rumored that he didn't hesitate to tell her about his affairs, but she tolerated it because without him, she was nothing. That's what happens to those who find themselves in a dependent position. Amaya had been in a similar situation with her mother once. They lived from paycheck to paycheck, and everything depended on the motel owner, but at least no one cheated on anyone. At the same time, Amaya still knew nothing about her father, who perhaps left the family for this very reason. Who knows? Maybe he found another woman and left her mother? Thinking about this, Amaya almost missed it when the mayor called her over to his table. He not only spoke words, but also beckoned her with his finger. Why are you standing there by the bartender? I'm more handsome and I have more money, the mayor said, spreading his wings, so to speak, and offering her a drink and a dance. However, Amaya had no intention of keeping him company. No, I can't. I'm at work and the manager forbids liberties with customers, Amaya replied, trying to defuse the situation. But the mayor didn't want to hear anything and demanded entertainment. I own everything in this city, including your restaurant, so do as I say. Saliva flew from his mouth, and his eyes turned red. I still can't, I'm sorry, Amaya said, stepping away from him to a safe distance. Interestingly, the security didn't even react to this. Apparently, they were accustomed to such antics from their boss and were waiting for a convenient opportunity to mock the poor waitress together with him. But there was a glitch. 
Amaya didn't agree to drink with the mayor, let alone dance. This insulted Alvaro Carrera's dignity, and he began to make vulgar jokes at her expense. Amaya, of course, had to endure it, as etiquette required her to calmly react to all the guests' antics. She remembered that even the restaurant owner told her, Remember, Amaya, the guest is always right, no matter what happens. Precious words, she thought, and continued to let the mayor's jokes go in one ear and out the other. Alvaro Carrera seemed to have had enough and began openly insulting Amaya in front of the guests, using words that implied she was the lowest and most fallen woman in the city, even though he didn't know her at all. Amaya tried to endure it as best she could, even though she was boiling inside. Ines rushed to her side and tried to lead her to the kitchen. Come on, let's go, or you're going to explode in anger, she said. But Amaya didn't hear her. She broke free from Ines' grip and ran to the stage. At that moment, the surgeon arrived with his fiancée. The mayor tried to get his attention, but all the guests gasped at once. Amaya had grabbed the microphone and began to say things about the mayor that others were afraid to even think. Alvaro Carrera swallowed hard and slumped into his chair. The surgeon, who didn't understand anything, approached the mayor and looked at him quizzically, but he didn't answer because he had lost the power of speech for the moment. Amaya continued to heap revelations and accusations on him, reminding everyone what a womanizer and thief he was, as well as throwing in charges of bullying and drinking on someone else's dime. Among the invited guests were some owners of other restaurants. They listened silently to what Amaya said about their benefactor, and only Phil Moss Sip, who had recently arrived at his own restaurant, stood off to the side and smiled. Apparently, he expected something like this from Amaya and didn't rush to stop her. On the contrary, he nodded his head, looked around, and watched the guests' reactions. After all, almost all of them were somehow hooked on the mayor, and with their silent consent, Alvaro Carrera had become so arrogant that he disregarded all moral laws. Someone needed to stop him, to make him understand that this was not how one should treat people. But no, they continued to indulge him. While Amaya took advantage of the mayor's confusion, someone at the party filmed everything on their phone. The footage captured Alvaro Carrera harassing the waitress and the subsequent exposure. Other guests joined in the filming, finally realizing that the mayor had nothing to say in his defense, and he had no intention of doing so. He began to dance and drink at the same time. He wasn't concerned that the video might end up on the internet. The security guards did try to stop this, but it was useless. The interesting footage had already spread to all social media platforms and forums. The mayor was fully exposed. Meanwhile, Amaya finished her speech. Phil Mossip helped her off stage. Go home, you need to rest, he said. But what about the job? Protested Amaya. They can manage without you, smiled the restaurant owner. There will be such a mess now, it's better to stay away from trouble. Amaya listened and went home to avoid any more trouble. Phil Mossip called her a taxi and paid for it himself. She didn't know what happened at the restaurant after that. Meanwhile, the mayor felt so emboldened that he even ignored the security guard's request to leave the hall. He wanted more fun and demanded first-class service. Reality hit him when videos of his behavior went viral among his supporters and constituents. The internet was in an uproar, and the regional authorities had to intervene directly. They called the mayor themselves and forced him to stop the whole debacle. The wedding of a famous surgeon in the city was ruined, and he was livid with anger. He celebrated his own happiness, he cursed, but his words were immediately drowned out by the guests' cheers. Thank you, Phil Mossip, for your hospitality. Always happy to have you here. Come back anytime, the restaurant owner replied with a smile. The guests started to leave, and the mayor was almost carried out on their shoulders. The security guards barely managed to persuade him to stop. Alvaro Carrera no longer realized what he was doing. Apparently, alcohol and his belief in his impunity clouded his judgment, and he couldn't even imagine what awaited him in the morning. The authorities prepared a public statement to avoid further scandal and shame. 
Only in the car, when he regained his senses, did the mayor realize what he had done. He grabbed his head and started whining like a child, but no one tried to calm him down anymore. The security guards also realized they had to look for new jobs. They rode home in disappointment, occasionally glancing at the culprit. He looked around in hopes of finding sympathy. Finally, he felt guilty for what he had done. Meanwhile, another no less famous person in the city watched the video from the restaurant. It was millionaire Javier Jimenez, who owned two factories and a dozen stores. He could afford not to get involved in the mayor's affairs and not be afraid that he would do something to him. Senor Jimenez went through trials in his youth that the mayor couldn't even dream of. And he didn't have a shaky syndrome in front of the authorities. As for the situation in the restaurant, on the video frames, Javier noticed similar features in the waitress. She looked exactly like his late daughter Elizabeth, who died during a cesarean section while giving birth. Two healthy boys were born, but their mother could not be saved. Javier grieved deeply as he lost his only child. Elizabeth's husband Carlos took care of raising the twins. For his part, the millionaire promised to do everything to ensure that his grandchildren lacked nothing. He fully took care of the family's financial security. Senor Jimenez had been helping before, but now the help became even greater. After watching the video several times, Javier realized that the similarity was simply identical. He made everyone actively find this waitress. A day later, the millionaire already knew the exact address. Frowning, he turned the piece of paper in his hands and quietly said, Well, Amaya, what a beautiful name. A tear immediately rolled down his cheek. Gathering his thoughts and not saying anything to his wife, he went to the address. He still had to find out how it happened that there was another girl, a spitting image of his daughter. Strange, of course. And first of all, he needed to ask his wife about it. But he decided to act differently and came to visit Amaya without warning. The girl was surprised to see a gray-haired man on the doorstep. Who are you? Amaya asked, studying the uninvited guest. I am the one who will become closer to you than anyone else, Javier replied. I don't understand what that means, Amaya was surprised, but she didn't close the door to the apartment in front of him. Here, I hope this picture will give you the right idea, and yes, my name is Javier Jimenez. Looking closely at the photo, Amaya raised her eyebrows and said, So it's me, only two years younger. I don't remember anyone taking a picture of me then. Not quite, Amaya, the millionaire replied. Wow, you know my name. She exclaimed. Well, yes, I had to prepare before coming to you, Javier continued. I see. So, can you tell me where you got my picture from? Amaya asked. Yes, it's not actually you. It's my late daughter Elizabeth, the guest replied, feeling a dead weight in his heart. Amaya helped him to her apartment and sat him down on the couch. This was the first time she had to provide medical assistance, but thankfully Javier started to feel better after a minute. He took a deep breath and said, I don't know how it happened, but you look very much like her. Yes, I already figured that out. The time had come to find out where Elizabeth's doppelganger came from. However, Javier seemed to have no information on the matter. He thought Amaya would tell him everything, but she too remained silent, surprised by his reaction. Finally, he couldn't take it anymore and asked, So where did you come from? My mother gave birth to me, but I've never seen my father, Amaya replied. And that's when the millionaire started to understand what was going on. He called his wife and ordered her to come to Amaya's place. It took Andrea Jimenez half an hour to arrive. She looked at her husband and shook like a leaf. Explain to me, Andrea, what all this means. Javier almost shouted at his wife. Calm down, Javier, I'll tell you everything, just don't be angry, she cried and began to explain. It turned out that when his wife was about to give birth, she was admitted to a maternity hospital where Amaya's mother worked as a midwife. They became good friends. Andrea complained to her about her husband who was under investigation and it was uncertain what would happen to him. She was afraid she wouldn't be able to raise two children. 
so she suggested to the midwife, who incidentally was infertile, to take one of the babies after giving birth. At that time, Javier was indeed under investigation and was accused of several charges, but there was no evidence against him. The investigators simply gave the order to close his business. Everything happened during difficult times. There was a crisis and many businessmen were struggling. Mr. Jimenez held on, knowing he was innocent, and he did his best to keep in touch with his wife, never suspecting what she was going to do with one of their daughters. The businessman knew that he was going to have twin girls. He even came up with names for them, Elizabeth and Natalie. But while he was sitting in a detention center, he received news from his wife that one of the children didn't survive childbirth. Of course, this was a devastating blow to him. However, his wife reassured him that one girl was still alive and they needed to take care of her. Javier was almost overwhelmed by this news, but he pulled himself together and promised himself that as soon as he got out, he would surround his wife and surviving daughter with all-encompassing love and care. And that's exactly what happened. For years later, he was released and returned home. Javier tried not to think about what had happened in the maternity ward. It never occurred to him to verify whether everything was as it seemed. As a result, his wife kept a terrible secret all that time. She offered Belen help in the form of money, but she refused. She was satisfied just being a mom. To add credibility, Belen went to another area for a couple of years where her distant relative's house was located. Nobody knew about it, so nobody questioned where Belen's child came from. Andrea made documents for the girls so that there would be no problems in the future. And so their paths diverged. Soon, Belen returned to the city, but did not inform the real mother, Amaya, about it. And if it weren't for this video on the internet, the millionaire would have continued to live with the thought that his only daughter had died. The information was shocking, both for Javier and for Amaya herself. He was at a loss for words to express his anger. But they were found by Amaya. So this is how you lived all this time, mom, not even remembering that you had another daughter. I'm sorry, Amaya, but it was a difficult time back then. Andrea tried to justify herself. I see. What would you have done if Dad hadn't been released? Amaya insisted. I don't know, for God's sake, I don't know, Andrea cried. She couldn't find the right words to beg Amaya for forgiveness. And in despair, Andrea turned to her husband. Well, say something, don't just sit there in silence. I'm in shock. To be honest, I didn't expect this, her husband replied, but we still have to solve this problem. What problem? We're talking about our daughter here, Andrea exclaimed. I'm sorry, I'm saying something wrong, Javier grimaced. Yes, there's some fault on my part too, Amaya. I didn't calculate my strength and ended up in prison. If that hadn't happened, Andrea wouldn't have given you away to another woman. By the way, it was she who raised me, even though we were poor, Amaya pointed out. She died in poverty, and I did what I could to survive. Andrea hugged Amaya, who did not step back. Amaya felt the warmth of her mother. Suddenly, a thought occurred to her, but a heart won't lie. At that moment, Amaya burst into tears and, looking at Javier through her tears, said, You hurt me, but I forgive you. She spoke those words not out of despair, but because she truly forgave her real parents. After all, so much time had passed, and they had also faced a difficult fate. Andrea explained that she had literally had to survive while her husband was serving time. Later, when he was released, he managed to regain control of the business. On the other hand, Andrea could have found Amaya. But she had an oral agreement with Belen that neither of them would interfere with each other and create problems. Perhaps if Amaya's stepmother had revealed the truth before her death, the family reunion would have happened much faster. After calming down a bit, Amaya got up from the couch and went to the kitchen. I'm going to feed Herbis now, she said. Who's that? Jimenez's spouses asked in unison. My pet. You can come see him, replied Amaya. It turned out that the puppy had hidden under the kitchen table when a stranger appeared in Amaya's apartment. 
He didn't bark at them, he just listened to the sounds, trying to determine whether his owner was in danger. Andrea and Javier also went to the kitchen and saw the Snow White puppy under the table. Wow, he's so fluffy, Javier tried to stork him, and he didn't attack him. Yes, you can stork him, Amaya said. If he sees that everything is fine with me, he won't get angry. Urbis ate from his bowl and also received a good portion of affection from his owner's guests. Meanwhile, Javier suggested that Amaya go to their house. There you can look at your sister's photo album, said her father. Amaya agreed, and an hour later they were at the country house. Elizabeth's husband also came there. As soon as he saw Amaya, he was in shock. She really looked like his deceased wife. Looking at the photos in the album, Amaya recognized herself more and more in them because they hardly differed, except that she did not know what kind of character her sister had. But then her father enlightened her by telling her that Elizabeth also grew up as a calm child. She was respected at school, and she studied very well. Just like Amaya. Only her fate turned out to be much better and more prosperous, and that was the only black spot that gave off negativity. At the same time, Amaya no longer wanted to be angry with the Jimenez family. She drew the appropriate conclusions and decided that she needed to let go of the past, especially since there were nieces and nephews who needed care. Amaya offered Carlos help in raising them, and he gladly accepted. It seems that the husband of the deceased sister trusted her. Soon they all went to the cemetery to visit Belen's grave. Javier arranged everything with the necessary people and paid for all the expenses for the monument, as well as signed a contract for the care of the grave. Now special employees were supposed to look after it. Soon, Amaya finally moved into the Jimenez family's country house. She took Urbis from her apartment and decided to rent it out to students. That way, she became even closer to Carlos and his children. They gradually started to like each other. Amaya began to notice how he treated her and what he said. It became clear that Carlos needed support in the form of a loving person. Not right away, but they found common ground. At the same time, the Jimenez spouses were for Amaya and Carlos living together. After all, if you don't look for differences, it seemed from the outside that this was the most ordinary family. Amaya was really worried that Carlos would see his deceased wife in her, but no. He himself confessed to her that he had bitterness in his heart, but the heart needs a second chance. Carlos, in turn, tenderly took care of Amaya to show his true feelings. He didn't rush Amaya, but said she was his last love in this life. After such confessions, there could be no doubts. Amaya decided on a family with Carlos, and she also became attached to her nieces and nephews. As for the mayor, Alvaro Carrera got what he deserved. He was fired from his position and early elections were announced. Being left without a job, the former mayor started drinking. At first, it was just a glass or two a day to relieve tension and soothe his pain. But then everything went downhill and he couldn't see anything ahead of him. This pit was sucking him in with a deadly grip. His career went down the drain, as did his family relationships. His wife filed for divorce a month later and left him. Nothing united them anymore. Alvaro Carrera was left with nothing when everything he owned was confiscated. They didn't imprison him for corruption, but they banned him from working in government positions. Even ordinary janitorial jobs were not available to him, as many businessmen in the city turned against him. Meanwhile, preparations for the Jimenez family wedding were in full swing. If you're enjoying it as well, leave a like and subscribe to the channel.